Welcome teams, mentors, and students to This Is How We Robot. I'm Caden Wright, former CAD captain and current mentor for QBranch. And I'm Navash Paul, the current student CAD captain. And in this episode, we are going to show you the advantages that CAD can bring to your design flow and how we on FRC 4327 use CAD throughout our season. Before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on another episode and leave a comment below with your team name and number so we know who's tuning in. There are many different CAD programs available that offer a wide range of tools for almost any kind of 3D modeling you can and can't think of. So today we won't be going into specifics on how to CAD, we are not professional draftsmen, but we will be showing you the best practices to make CAD work for you in FRC. So let's jump right into things because this is how we robot. As you know, robots are complex machines. There are so many parts working together in such a tight package that it would be a mess to try and memorize where everything goes. So how do engineers keep track of dimensions, locations, and interactions in every single piece of a robot? Well, that's where CAD, or computer-aided drafting, comes into play. There are many different industries that use CAD, so you will find many different programs available. Some are good at 3D printing things, some are good at designing circuit boards, and some excel at running sim simulations. Through sponsorships and partnerships, FIRST Robotics makes teams be able to use SOLIDWORKS and Inventor files. While we choose Autodesk Inventor, there are many teams who use other options and resources in CAD. We will not tell you which is the best, but we will tell you which is why it's worth your time. While there are a myriad of features to explore in any of these programs, let's go over why we value CAD here at QBranch. There are three main components here. One, when we have prototyped mechanisms on the robot and decided on a general pathway forward, we then need to figure out the ideal dimensions and how this will fit within the constraints laid out by the game manual. This is very challenging when working with real world materials. Though doable with cardboard or maybe wood, we prefer the digital format so adjustments can be made quickly without needing more materials. Two, ideas existing solely within one person's head may be good for an individual project, but when we are working as one cohesive team, digital versions of mechanisms allow all members of the team to understand the design of the robot. Three, during the build phase, there is a lot of guess and check with regards to constructing the mechanisms. We know the exact dimensions of parts to be built before a mechanics member goes and cuts up some metal. Although this process takes up some time during the build season, the material, manpower, and time saved after, after the process is completely worth it for the effort. When opening up Autodesk Inventor, you'll be greeted with a screen that looks something like this. On the left side of the screen, four large buttons titled Part, Assembly, Drawing, and Presentation. Each CAD program will look slightly different and have a different file structure, but for the most part, we'll be able to accomplish the same things as these four buttons. The Part button allows us to make new parts from the ground up using geometric constraints and relationships. However, most of the parts we will use will be modified parts from a library of available files, which we will discuss later in this video. An assembly is a file containing multiple parts that are assembled together with different mates to remove or restrict movement within a model. These files help you understand how things fit together. This is where we find out the exact dimensions for spacing holes and figuring out the tricky mechanical assembly issues. This is much like assembling a real robot but you do not need physical bolts and nuts to hold pieces in place. Please note that in the real world, you do actually need bolts and holes drilled into pieces to hold materials together. 
Real world robots cannot be held together with ho hopes and dreams like in CAD. Drawings contain multiple views of an assembly or part with annotated dimensions and notes to tell your build team many things such as how long to cut a part, how two parts go together, or where to drill a hole. This is the meat and potatoes of how CAD comes to FRC. A CAD team has to make sure the design is accurate because technical drawings are direct representations of those models. Many times these drawings are given with direct directly to the students who are tasked with making this system in real life. If a drawing is wrong, then there is no way of knowing how to fix it or what to change about it so that we can make it better and more accurate. Well, the key to doing that is making sure that the 3D model represents as ideally as possible what the future robot will look like. In FRC, this starts with a CAD library. To put it simply, a CAD library is an online library of parts that you would use in real life when building an FRC robot. Most vendors that you would buy parts from, such as VexPro, West Coast Products, Animark, and many others, will offer available CAD files in some sort of download section on their store page. Going through and downloading all of the parts you plan to use can be a bit of a hassle though, so that's where we rely on the wonderful FRC community to make our job a little easier. Since for the most part, FRC teams largely use the same common parts, it is a big time saver to use a CAD library published online by another team. These libraries are often the accumulation of many years of gathering CAD files for various parts. They are well organized and have a common naming scheme, so you easily know where to look for a specific part. And then once you've found it, you actually know that it is the right part. Many times new CAD members don't understand the importance of a naming system or an organized part library. This results in files with names like electronics thingy. Now the original student may remember what that part is, but no one else working on the CAD will know. This is why organization is so important to an efficient workflow. If you are constantly being interrupted from actual design with having to figure out what parts electronic thingy is, then it's gonna take forever to start the actual build of the robot. And as we all know, time is a crucial resource both in FRC and our everyday life. This is one of the reasons CAD libraries are so helpful. They take the work out of organization so you can focus on design. Having your CAD library available to all members who need it is very important. There are very few things that you need to do, but this is one of them. Many times teams use GrabCAD, which is a cloud-based collaboration tool that is used to store CAD files online. This allows files to be uploaded and downloaded to make sure all members are on the same page. On Team 4327, we tackle this problem by having all our students have a networked drive that they can access at all times. This is important because having everything, all your CAD files on one storage space makes it very much easier so to, for you to know where your CAD files are and what they are. However, for your ease, I've gone ahead and shown you some links to the best ones down below in this video description. As you already know, at the start of every competition season, FIRST releases a comprehensive game manual detailing all the do's and don'ts of designing and building in their competition. This manual contains a ton of information that can be very overwhelming for both new and experienced teams. And that is why we addressed how we like to break down the annual challenge in a previous video. But right now, specifically, we're going to talk about the robot design rules and how you and your team can use CAD to gain a better visual understanding of what FIRST is expecting from you on inspection day to be eligible to play, and how to use that understanding to improve your design. I currently have open the general robot design section from the 2018 Power Up Game Manual. Rule R03 states that the maximum robot size, excluding bumpers, must be constrained to a volume of 33 inches by 28 inches by 55 inches tall. And Rule R04 states that robots may not extend more than 16 inches outside of their frame perimeter. At first glance, these rules may seem pretty simple and easy to adhere to, but what do they really mean in terms of designing and building your robot? As a quick side note, 
a, a pro Q-tip. Be sure to design your robot with less than a half an inch for the maximum allowed dimensions. The real world is far less forgiving when making precise cuts on parts. You do not want to be scrambling in the pits solving the inspection issue. You should be out there pr on the practice field with your drive team. Anyway, to answer this question, we're going to take a look at Team 3476's Code Orange Robotics public release of their 2018 CAD. In 2018, their team made it to the semifinals on Einstein at the Houston World Championships, which to put it lightly is quite the achievement. Turning to more experienced teams and analyzing their design is a great way to learn new concepts you can bring into your own. Currently, I have visibility for all subsystems except the chassis turned off, so there is less visual clutter and we can better examine the subassembly that we want. Now let's get a quick understanding of what we're looking at. On the left side of the screen, we see the file tree. This is where we can see all the components that have been placed into the current assembly and also the constraints holding them together. If we go ahead and read these file names, we can actually kind of figure out how their naming scheme works. The chassis subassembly is named 18-DRV-AO12-1. We can assume that the 18 tells them that this is a component for the 2018 season. We see that the DRV tells them it has to do with their drive system, and then AO12 underscore 1 would be the part number slash version. This is a good example of how important organization is for your workflow. Naming parts something like potato or the unusual untitled part 1 will not help your team in the long run. Looking at the main portion of the screen, we can see the work area and the chassis assembly. We see the drivetrain, the belly pan, with the mounted electronics and the supports for their bumpers. Other parts would be labeled with their design subsystems in the file name to help alleviate any confusion of what the a part is or where it goes on the robot. This is very handy when you have multiple students working on a CAD, each with their own subsystem. With all of this design in CAD, we can then ensure that all components begin in the starting configuration, as well as never extend beyond the frame perimeter limitations. We can move the parts here in CAD and then make edits as necessary. With the right constraints, we are able to move subsystems like intakes or arms or elevators around to make sure they always fit within the defined limitations of the game challenge manual. Here we know their intake is able to move and never extends beyond the 16 inch limit outside of their frame perimeter. This is far simpler to do in the virtual dimension than it is in the real world after metal is already cut or you have a week left before the first competition and the robot is oversized. We have seen this before where robots show up the, to the first night of the competition and are several inches over the allowed frame perimeter. Luckily there were several teams willing to help cut down their frame and put Humpty Dumpty back together again in time for that team to get out for their first match. Hopefully anyone who watched through today's episode has learned a thing or two they can bring with them to, onto the oncoming season. Whether this is your first time learning CAD or you've just learned some few tips like utilizing, utilizing a common parts library, the importance of organized design, or how to understand FRC design constraints and implement those in your CAD. I hope that you can take something away from today's video. As always, links and resources mentioned in today's episode will be provided down below, so make sure to take a look if you're interested. Thanks for watching and being with us here today. Remember to leave a comment with your team name and number so we know what robots to cheer on this season. And as always, subscribe to this channel to keep finding out more on This Is How We Robot.